Welcome to the last video in Advanced Higher Maths. It's time for Maths with Mr. Thomas. Congratulations, you have made it to the end of Advanced Higher. Woo! This is the review lesson for the proofs chapter, just like all the other review lessons. It's just me skimming over all of the key points, everything that you need to know for this chapter. If there's anything you want in a little more detail though, or you want to see more examples, look back to the individual lessons. So we started this chapter off looking at disproof by counterexample, but before we got into that, I was saying you have to familiarise yourself with the different number sets, because this crops up all the time in the proofs chapter. You need to know that n is your natural numbers, your counting numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Whole numbers also include 0, but it's the same as your natural numbers. Z is your integers, which is your positive or negative whole numbers. Your rational numbers are numbers that can be written as a fraction. Have a look at these examples here. And R is going to be your set of real numbers, which is really just any number that doesn't then go into imaginary or complex numbers. So disproof by counterexample was the first main lesson in this chapter. It started this off saying that not all statements are true. Dun, dun, dun. And disproving a statement's often much easier than proving the statement is always true. Because all you have to do is just find one example that would prove the statement to be false. For example, with something ridiculously easy like this, find a counter example to disprove that all prime numbers are odd. Well, if you imagine all your prime numbers, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, and so on, they're all odd apart from that very first one. 2 is the only even prime number. So you can say that the example 2, well, 2 would prove that statement's false. 2 is a prime number and it's even, so the statement is false. Something that you're more likely to get in an exam would probably be this. It's slightly trickier. So disprove by providing a counterexample for all AB belonging to the set of real numbers. If A is less than B, it implies that A squared will be less than B squared. A lot of the time with your proof by counterexample, negatives are going to be involved. So here I need A to be less than B, so I'm choosing A to be negative 4 and B to be 3. So A is less than B. Woo! That's what we want. If you square each of those numbers, negative 4 squared is 16 and 3 squared is 9. What we found then is that, well, you know 16 is bigger than 9, so it means A squared will be bigger than B squared. So that there will disprove that statement. And we can say then that the statement will be false. So when it comes to disproof by counterexample, you just have to find one example that would make that statement false, that disproves it. We then went on to look at direct proof. And direct proof, all that does is it takes an original statement and uses known facts or manipulations, such as the rules of algebra, to show that it is true. A lot of the time you're going to deal with odd or even numbers. And if n is an even number, well, an even number is always going to be 2 times something. It's always going to be in the 2 times table. So you write down that n would equal 2 times k for some integer k. If n is an odd number that you're dealing with, well, you're going to let n equal 2 times something. That gives you an even number, but then plus or minus 1. That would always take it 1 above or below your even number, meaning you would always get your odd number. And if n is divisible by 3, it means it's always going to be in the 3 times table, so you can set it out as n equals 3k. So a lot of the time this will come in handy when dealing with direct proofs, as well as some of the other proofs as well. If we had this one here, given x is an even number, prove x squared is an even number. Well, we're starting off with x as an even number, and you know even numbers are always going to be in the 2 times table, so you could let x equal 2 times something. So 2k, where k belongs to z, k is going to be an integer. x squared then would be the 2k all squared, and if you multiply the brackets, you get 4k squared. Take out 2 as a common factor to get you down to 2 times something. And once you've got it in the form of 2 times something, well, you know 2 times something is always going to be an even number. So you can say then that that will be even. So that proves that x squared will also be even. With this one here, let n be a natural number. Use direct proof to show that if n is a multiple of 9, then so is n squared. So to be a multiple of 9, n must be divisible by 9. So you can say then that n must equal 9 times m just for some natural number, m. Therefore, 
n squared would equal 9m all squared, which gives you 81m squared. And if you take out 9 as a factor, you can say that it's 9 times 9m squared. And because you've got 9 times something, you know that that's going to be divisible by 9. It'll be in the 9 times table. So you can say then that, hence, n squared is a multiple of 9, and so the statement will be true. So using direct proof, you're just wanting to use known rules or often algebra in order to prove your given statement. Before we move to into proof by contradiction and proof by contrapositive, I wanted to throw this lesson in on negation statements. Some statements are difficult to prove in the form that they are written, so when it comes to the following two proofs, we instead use the negation. And that's really the logical opposite of a statement. So the negation of statement P is the statement that is true if P is false and false if P is true. For example, if I told you that triangle ABC is equilateral, what would make that false is if ABC was not equilateral. So that's going to be the opposite of that statement. If A is even, what makes that false? Well, it's if A is odd. If X add 4 equals 7, will be if X add 4 does not equal 7. If XY is less than X adds Y, well, the negation of that would be if XY was not less than X plus Y. So if it's not less than, it's going to be bigger than or equal to. Taking negation statements a little bit further, if I told you I was rich and famous, you can disprove that by demonstrating that either I'm not rich or I'm not famous. It doesn't have to be both parts. You can show that that would be false by just showing that one of the bits wouldn't be true. So the negation of A and B is not A or not B. And there's some examples with this here. So if it is cold and wet today, well, the negation of that would be it's not cold or it's not wet. And then there's other examples as well. If I told you that I was either a blonde or a brunette, to disprove that, you would have to show that I'm neither of those. I'm not blonde and I'm not a brunette. So the negation of A or B would be not A and not B. So if I told you I was either rich or I was happy, well, to, in order to disprove that, you would say then that I'm not rich and I'm not happy. I couldn't be either of those things. And if I said to Ben that if he doesn't take an umbrella, he'll get wet, he could disprove that by still not taking an umbrella, but then not getting wet. So the negation of an implication requires proving that the conclusion does not follow from the premise. So even though the first part is true, the second is not. So if you don't set your alarm for school, then you will be late. Here, the negation would be if you don't set your alarm, well, the first part remains the same, but then it's the next part that would change. So instead of being late, you will not be late. Look back to this lesson on negation statements if you want this explained in a little more detail. That is a summary, though, of how you would write your negation statements. We then went on to look at proof by contradiction, and a contradiction is just a collection of statements that oppose one another. For example, if I told you Lucy is married to Sam, but Sam's not married to Lucy, well, that doesn't make sense. There's a contradiction there. Proof by contradiction is based on the principle that something that leads to a contradiction cannot be true. Well, if Lucy's married to Sam, but Sarah's not married to Lucy, that makes no sense. That can't be true. But then the opposite would be true. If Lucy is married to Sam, then it means that Sam will be married to Lucy. So we can say the opposite will be true. When it comes to maths, really what we do is we assume the negation statement to be true. And by a series of steps, we arrive at a contradiction. What that shows you then is the negation statement will be false. The negation statement's not true. And if the negation statement is false, then it means the original statement will be true. So to write a proof by contradiction, first of all, write the negation statement. Attempt to prove the negation statement to be true. If that can't be done, you will arrive at a contradiction. And the contradiction implies the negation statement is false. If the negation statement's false, then the original statement is true. We worked through a few examples of these. For this one here, example two, prove by contradiction if P is rational and Q is irrational, then P plus Q is an irrational number. So remember, for your proof by contradiction, you need the negation statement. So the first part you keep as it is. So P is rational and Q is irrational. Perfect, we're keeping that. But it's this next part that we would change. So PQ is an irrational number. So we would keep the first part the same. P is rational. Q is irrational, but then we would change PQ to be a rational number. If P plus Q then is a rational number, we know we can write it as a fraction. We can write it as A over B. 
If we rearrange that, subtract P from both sides, we'd have A over B take away P on the right, but P is a rational number, meaning that can be written as a fraction. So it can be written as C over D for some integers C and D. If we subtract these fractions, we end up with AD take away BC over BD, but that means that we have just written Q as a fraction, but it says up here that Q is an irrational number. And if it's an irrational number, it can't be written as a fraction. So that leads to a contradiction of the negation statement. That means the negation statement is false, therefore the original statement will be true. Again, there's a few more examples if you look at that lesson. Finally, we looked at proof by contrapositive, and it started off introducing what the contrapositive is all about. So imagine if I had the statement, if it's raining, then I am certain the ground will be wet. Well, that's true. If it's raining, the ground will be wet. That's obvious. From that, we can come up with the inverse, the converse, and the contrapositive. The inverse is when we say it's not the first, and it implies it's not the second. So if it's not raining, then I'm certain that the ground will not be wet. Well, that's false. If it's not raining, you could still have somebody watering the plants. You could have somebody washing their car. The ground will could still be wet. So that there is nonsense. That'd be false. The converse is when you would have it backwards, so the second would imply the first. So if the ground is wet, then I'm certain it's raining. Again, you can have somebody watering plants, somebody washing the car. The ground will end up wet, but it doesn't mean it's raining, so that would also be false. However, the contrapositive is when it's not the second, it implies it's not the first. So if the ground is not wet, then I'm certain that it is not raining. And if you think about that, if the ground is not wet, so if the ground is dry, well, if the ground is dry, then you're certain, you know then, that it's not raining. And that one would be true. There's another example there with rectangles and parallel lines, but the same thing. If the statement is true, then the inverse and the converse are false, but the contrapositive always works out to be true as well. And if the contrapositive is true as well, what that means is if you can prove the contrapositive to be true, then it proves the original statement to also be true. So to write a proof by contrapositive, what you do is first of all write down the contrapositive statement. Then you would prove that statement. A lot of the time it's going to be using a direct proof. And you will then say then that since the contrapositive statement is true, the original statement is also true. So an example of that, by considering the contrapositive of the statement, if 7x plus 9 is even, then x is odd. So if your original statement is if a then b, the contrapositive will be if it's not b, then it's not a. So if it's not the second part, then it's not the first. So what we say is if 7x add 9 is even, then x is odd. So we take the second part and we make that a negative. We say if x is not odd. So in other words, if x is even. And then we take the first part, if 7x add 9 is even, well, we'd say it's not that. So if 7x add 9 is odd. So if it's not b, then it's not a. We then have to prove that. So if x is even, we know an even number is going to be 2 times something. So x would equal 2k. k is going to be an integer. And that means 7x add 9 will replace x with 2k. So we'd have 7 times 2k add 9. Multiply with the brackets. And from there, we need to try and prove that that is an odd number. For this one here, because we've got plus 9 in the end, well, an odd number will always have a plus 1 in the end. So we can rewrite 9 as 8 add 1. With the 14k add 8, take out 2 as a common factor, so it's 2 times something plus 1. And we know the 2 times something, the 7k add 4 is just an integer, so I'm just going to write it down as a, where a is going to be an integer. So it'll be 2 times some integer plus 1. And if we have that, that will be an odd number. So, our contrapositive statement works out to be true. And if the contrapositive is true, it implies the original statement is also true. That is a very quick summary of all the lessons in the proofs chapter. Again, if there's anything you're not understanding or you want in a little more detail, look back to the individual lessons. This is just the key points to ensure there's nothing you've forgotten before the exam. But that's it. Done. Finished. Advanced higher maths. Finished. Woo! Well done, making it this far. High five. Yo.